Hi guys, my name is Stephanie Lemus and I'm an Azure Technology and Solutions Specialist based here in Southern California. I'm part of the Global Black Belt team covering the Americas and I specialize in cloud native architectures and open source databases. I'd like to thank you for joining me for this session on using MongoDB Atlas on Azure to do more with less. Now, a lot of you, I know AWS had the jump start. They got to cloud first. They have a lot of mind share. Some of you don't know that Azure looks a lot like AWS. Um, again, CIOs like it. They love it. You know, for those of you who don't know anything about Azure or maybe haven't seen Azure in a while, let me reintroduce you. When I started with the platform, we had six things. So we were talking to customers about enterprise class, infinitely scalable architectures and applications. But you know what? Back then, we had six primitives that we had to build that with. We had cloud services, we had um, SQL Azure, networking, storage, CDN, and caching. So we had to build these infinitely scalable applications using six things. Today, we have not only what you see on the screen here, we actually have you know, a thousand plus different things that you could use to build a modern application on the Azure platform. This is why you know, our cloud share keeps growing. You know, we're growing faster, almost double the rate of AWS, and certainly almost four times as fast as Google in this space. Um, we are sort of, a, according to Goldman Sachs, we are that old saying that, you know, one of my customers said to me when I first joined Microsoft of, when I was, you know, doing IT, my boss always said, you'll never get fired for picking IBM. I'm like, what does that mean? And I'm like, oh, now today I get it. If you are a developer and you're looking for a cloud hosting platform and you pick Azure, there's a pretty high chance, at least according to Goldman Sachs, that you're picking something that your CIO would approve of. We host, obviously, all of the large sort of Fortune 500, 150 customers in the world. Now, back then, when we first started with Azure, it was all Windows and SQL based. So, you know, we used to talk to customers about, look, there's nobody on the planet who can run a Windows server better than Microsoft. Same for SQL. We wrote the code. We have all the support tickets. We understand what breaks it. We understand how to fix it. We know what solutions work on it. We know what solutions don't work on it. You might be good at Windows. You're never going to be as good as we are. Why wouldn't you give us your application? Let us take care of Windows. You take care of your app. We do what we do best. You do what you do best. Everybody wins. And that's exactly the approach that we've taken even to this day. You know, it's why we have these partnerships with SAP and Oracle and NetApp and Cray, um, Red Hat. We have Red Hat support engineers. So when you call up to get support for Red Hat, their engineers are sitting right next to Azure engineers, like truly in the same support center. And it's why this Mongo um, Atlas on Azure offering is so compelling. I think not only, you know, the fact that we've partnered and we're letting Mongo do what they do best, which is run Mongo on Azure. I think the fact that we both come from the same perspective makes this a unique partnership. Because if you think about it, Amazon and Google were born in the cloud. So when they go out and talk to you as a customer, everything is talking about the cloud. When Microsoft talks to you as a customer, we have to remember, and Mongo as well, when the two of us talk to you as a customer, well, we have both sold a whole lot of on-prem software to you guys. You guys own, you know, in some cases, millions of dollars of Microsoft on-prem legacy software that you license every year from Microsoft, and Mongo have the same thing. So we can't just say to you, ah, oh, forget about all that stuff you have in your data center, just move it to the cloud. You know, why would you want to deal with that? Just forget about it. Because we know it's not that easy. We respect the fact that you have this investment that you can't just walk away from. So we think about our businesses and our customers very similarly, which is what makes this partnership so special to us. And we believe it makes it better together because we both understand what that hybrid environment looks like. We understand how customers think about technology on-prem as well as in the cloud. We also understand what are the types of applications our mutual customers build with our software and what are the things that they need. So this is ongoing um, work together to make sure that if you're going to build an application on Mongo, you have requirements and things that you will need, typically around real-time, low latency, high performance, global reach. That's why you pick Mongo. And Azure needs to be there with all the supporting pieces to make sure we have those pieces available for you as well. So it's a great partnership. And what I want to do now is turn it over to my MongoDB counterpart and have him show you exactly what this Atlas on Azure experience looks like. So you can see these integration points and um, understand what this feels like and what it looks like, what, what the give get is and why it's good for customers. Thanks, Stephanie. So let's talk about what is MongoDB Atlas. It is, of course, MongoDB fully managed as a service on Azure, and it is currently available in 33 Azure regions. That's amazing. So Atlas has actually been in the making for about eight years. 
and in 2017, we launched on Azure. And since then, we've been adding a host of new features. For example, Cloud Provider Snapshots, so you can take backups that are extremely fast. Or the free tier that lets you try out Atlas on Azure at literally no cost. And advanced security integration, for example, integration with Azure Key Vault, so you can manage your own encryption keys. More recently, we've added VNet peering across regions and support for public and private connection strings using Split Horizon DNS. And of course, these are features that are only on Azure, but in addition to standard features of Atlas available on any cloud. Now, Atlas is secure by default. It is proven. We have earned these certifications, which quite honestly has taken an extreme amount of effort and investment and time as well. But today, banks and healthcare providers and other you know, industries that are highly regulated are using Atlas for mission critical production applications. We meet their security standards. Atlas is also highly available by default and every cluster contains a minimum of three nodes and each node is deployed on a different Azure availability zone such that we provide high availability within that data center. But you can take that a step further by expanding your cluster across regions so that you now are fault tolerant against the possibility of an actual full region outage. And an even step further is the ability to create global clusters, which let me provide my audience in each major geographical area with their own dedicated replica set. And here we call them shards or zones where each zone has its own primary and secondaries, providing high availability, but more important, providing local rights and local reads such that our audience now has the best user experience, irrespective of where they are located. And the Atlas admin plane lets you manage multiple organizations, multiple projects, multiple clusters, so that each team can have their own you know, development, QA, and production clusters, and so on, share them between teams, or maybe even segregate them in case they're working on a highly secret and highly secure project. Now, how do you migrate to Atlas? We provide a managed service called Live Migration that essentially lets you migrate any existing deployment of MongoDB self-managed into Atlas. And how does it work? Well, it works by performing first an initial sync, which is taking a copy of the data 100% from the source cluster into the target Atlas cluster, and then listening for changes, and we call that the ongoing sync, so that you don't have to shut down your applications for a large amount of time. You know, they're still functioning and they're still writing to the database, and we are listening for those changes and replicating them in real time. And when you're ready to make the cutover, you can then simply shut down your applications, let any last minute changes trickle over, change your connection string, restart your applications, and voila, you're done. And your end customers experience near zero downtime. How awesome is that? This is what the Atlas admin plane looks like. I have already created a cluster up front called production. It is running MongoDB's latest version 4.2.6. It is deployed on the Azure California West US region. It is of size M10. It is also a replica set covering four nodes because we've added an extra node for in-place analytics and we have enabled our BI connector, which lets you speak SQL against MongoDB for analytics and reporting purposes. Now, let me walk you through how MongoDB Atlas can provide an elastic database service that can even span across regions and upscale up and down automatically. So let's go into the configuration of this cluster and as we saw before, this is already deployed in Azure in California West US, but I can expand this cluster to cover multiple regions to protect myself against a full region outage. A best practice is to deploy uh, five nodes across three regions. Therefore, on any region outage, I will always have the majority of the nodes alive in my cluster will be able to elect a new primary when it performs an election. Now, I've already added before a analytical node. So now I can direct all my queries for BI and reporting and not disturb or affect the uh, operation 
capability of my electable nodes. I can even change the tier of this cluster at any point in time. This is currently an M10, which is the smallest tier that has all the, the, the full functionality. Let's say that I were to change this cluster to an M30. So now that changes to eight gigs of RAM, three gigs of storage at minimum, and so on. And I can even configure this cluster to auto scale depending on certain thresholds. For example, I can say, scale this cluster as maximum as an M50, which provides you 32 gigs of RAM, etc., or scale it down to as low as an M10, which we saw before provides about two gigs of RAM. And Atlas will automatically replace the nodes one by one without affecting your cluster. And because you will be using our latest drivers from your application code, our latest drivers include automatic retries for both reads and for writes. Therefore, there will be no interruption in terms of the, your database service when using our latest drivers and Atlas auto scale features. And the final walkthrough here is the additional settings. In here, you can control the version of your cluster. Now, this cluster is already using the latest, which is 4.2. Therefore, I cannot change this. But if I was using 4.0, obviously, the, the option to upgrade would be available. Now, you control the major version. You control when that is upgraded. Atlas takes care of the minor version. So basically, the patches right, for, for every minor release. Okay, And that is done automatically for you. You don't have to worry about that. Second is backup. This is already enabled. This cluster is using Cloud Provider Snapshots. The snapshots are stored uh, in Azure Storage. You control the retention policy, which essentially is how often are snapshots taken and for how long do you keep them. And as well, another feature here is the uh, point in time restore, which lets you restore your cluster up to a certain point in time, up to a certain minute. That's the, the, the lowest resolution. This cluster also has the BI connector enabled and so reconfigured to hit, uh, the, the queries are going to hit the analytical node so that it does not impact the operational nodes which are serving you know, your web applications, mobile applications, JSON APIs or RESTful APIs and so on. And finally, this cluster is also configured to use Azure Key Vault for encryption at rest. What this means is that you can provide your own encryption key, which can be extracted from Azure Key Vault, and then use uh, that in the cluster to encrypt the data completely at rest. Now, I am going to go and deploy the changes to this cluster. Currently, it is a replica set M10 that is uh, running against a single region, which is California West US. And Atlas is going to now span this cluster across three regions with five nodes, okay? And, uh, and all the changes that I've made in here, including the auto scale. So I'm going to let this cluster auto scale from an M, as low as an M10, which is the current size. And let's just say that it's only going to go as high as an M30. Okay, and now I will, literally all I need to do is say, review changes. The Atlas UI tells me these are the changes that you are going to do, please, please confirm. Right, we see, we see there the cluster tier change, the node configuration, the number of nodes, the number of regions, their BI connector, etc. It also tells me the, the price impact, right? Perfect. So let's go ahead and deploy that and simply click Apply Changes. And immediately, Atlas is building a plan to go and provision the nodes and all the resources in Azure, including that you see, provisioning private network. So you know, essentially, we're going to come back in 10, 15 minutes or so, and we should see this cluster fully span across uh, multiple regions and all the changes that I made as well. So let me walk you through how Azure Key Vault was configured. I'm going to go into the Advanced uh, tab under the Security section, scroll down to the Encryption at Rest using Key Management, expand that, and we see that Azure Key Vault is already being configured. Right? It is configured currently on one cluster, my production cluster. These are my Azure account credentials. And here, here are the, the credentials for the key vault. And my key vault is called SN MongoDB Vault West US, also under this resource group. And if I now tab into my Azure portal, here is my key vault, SN MongoDB Vault West US. Okay, and so that is configured again. Now I can own and rotate my keys in Azure Key Vault and apply that to one or more clusters 
inside this project called, uh, in this case, it's called SIG Azure Peer and KMS. So any cluster inside this project is going to share uh, those security settings. For example, if you're having a microservice architecture where each microservice uh, uses their own cluster, all of them could be sharing the same key, for example, right? The next integration point between Azure and Atlas that I want to show you is VNet peering. So let's go into the network access tab of security, go into the peering tab, and there you see the VNet that is peered with my Atlas cluster or my Atlas project actually. So my VNet is called SN MongoDB uh, VN West US uh, against this particular Azure subscription. Uh, for the US West, right? And that's the CIDR block that Atlas is, is using. And if I tab into my Azure portal, here is my VNet, SN MongoDB VN West US, just like we mentioned there, right? And if you go into the peering section, there is the actual peer. So that is the VNet from Atlas. So again, all Atlas clusters are stored in their own VNet. They are private and only available you know, to your project in Atlas. And so now you can peer your VNets where your applications are running, whether they are traditional applications or including Azure Container Services, right? They are living inside that VNet and anything inside that VNet can now talk to the cluster via peering, simple. Now the change to my cluster configuration is done. And if I drill down into the cluster, we can see that indeed it is spread out across three different Azure regions. California West US, Iowa Central US, Virginia East US. I have my operational nodes across all three, and I have one extra analytical node in West US. How awesome was that? This was done literally under minutes and without any downtime. Amazing. Atlas and Azure create a better together story by integrating key services that allow your applications and your developers to become more productive and to offer amazing applications using all of Azure services together with the power of MongoDB and Atlas. Azure VNet allows us to connect any application logic or microservice running on Azure Community Service, Azure App Service, virtual machines, etc., to the Atlas cluster via VNet peering, Azure Key Vault allows you to provide your own encryption keys or rather own your encryption keys and have Atlas encrypt your data at rest. Azure Active Directory also lets you manage your users and your permissions so that they can authenticate and you can control what your users can do and cannot do and what they have access to in the Atlas clusters, meaning the actual data. You can visualize your data using Azure's Power BI against data from your MongoDB Atlas cluster using the MongoDB BI connector, which is a fully managed service available with your Atlas clusters. You can also run advanced machine learning and data science jobs, right? Using Azure Databricks and connect your MongoDB cluster using our Apache Spark connector. So thanks, Sig. Um, as you guys can see, hopefully you can see now, um, there's a lot of goodness with MongoDB Atlas on Azure in conjunction with Azure. As I mentioned before, we've really given a lot of thought to what are our enterprise customers, our mutual enterprise customers, what do they want to build and how are they going to use the platform? So, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, why you would want to think about doing this strategy. I think honestly, if you think about it, it's kind of a no-brainer. It's time to go back and revisit and figure out where are the places that we can optimize and clean up a little bit. Um, we've talked about, you know, where do you get started? What kind of ap applications should you target for your first wave? The old thing one, thing two, thing three. To revisit that, you know, thing one and thing two are pretty much ready. You know, they are either containerized, they're sitting on an Apache server, they're already using Mongo. These are very low-hanging fruit because all you have to do is set up the migration tool for Mongo, get your data up there, and then move your application either into Azure App Services or into a container for Azure Kubernetes service. Thing three, doesn't mean you can't do it. I just recommend personally that it's not the best place to start because thing one and thing two can bring you immediate return for the effort there. And the resources that you free up by migrating your thing one and thing twos often are then able to pivot and work on your harder thing three things. By all means, you can start with thing three. You can find your biggest application on your network. You know, I think we all agree that Mongo CE or Enterprise Advanced can handle any size workload that you want to throw at it, as can Azure. 
you can certainly start with the big, hard, scary stuff. But, you know, I'm a fan of starting with the small little stuff. So getting started with Azure is super simple. Just go out to azure.com, free trial. Um, we'll give you a bucket of services that you get the use of every single month so you can check out the platform if you haven't before. Getting started with MongoDB Atlas on Azure is just as easy. Go out, do a search um, for services for MongoDB, and um, the service will come up in the marketplace here. We get started for free. If you are definitely committed, you know that you want to do this, you can either reach out to your Mongo rep or you can just ask for information there in the portal. Really, really simple to get started. If you haven't looked at Azure Kubernetes service uh, before, I would definitely recommend you take a look at it. We have so many customers that are taking these old native applications sitting on Apache and moving them up into Kubernetes service. It really is kind of where things are going right now. We suggest, you know, if you're not quite sure even where these pockets of applications might be, these, these stupid things, start looking around for Mongo Community Edition applications that you have running around. Again, I want to emphasize that when we talk about scooping up these Mongo CE Edition applications, I don't want to imply that CE can't do anything but these little applications. It's just that these smaller applications tend to be housed on CE editions out there. And again, we're all here to help. This is why this partnership is so strong. The fact that we have Microsoft field personnel working directly with Mongo field personnel together. We do joint calls. I've been on more calls uh, between the two teams than I can really count over the last month. So we are working very, very tightly together. This is a great partnership and we really want to support you. So please, you know, reach out, reach out to Microsoft, reach out to Mongo, let us know how we can help you explore this effort. And um, we hope you have a great rest of the conference. Uh, please let us know how we can help and have a great day.